Good afternoon, Pastor David. Hey, John. Welcome, everybody, to a random moment with Pastor David Unfiltered. Today, Pastor, we I had the privilege of going with you to a meeting, and, uh, and it was cool to see uh, you ministering to senior pastors. And, and uh, one gentleman came to me, was sharing uh, something interesting, how he was speaking about satellite churches and how there was a satellite church planted in some other state and, you know, people were receiving it and, and going there and started thinking about that. And so I was telling you about it and, and uh, I, I really appreciated your response. And so I wanted to see if I can get your feedback on uh, your opinion on or the pros and cons, if there are any pros and to satellite churches. Satellite churches. Uh, some of those who are listening right now may not be aware of the term or be, be uh, aware of what a satellite church is. A satellite church, as the term is generally used today, speaks of a church that is, um, that is meeting for church services on a location, but a different location from where the church that is holding the live meeting uh, is actually holding the meeting in. In other words, it would be me here, we'll say in Chino, broadcasting my services to another state or another city. So what they have is they have, we'll say a uh, an auditorium, maybe even children's ministry. They'll have all the trappings of a, um, of a, a church um, that people would normally attend, you know, building, structure, you know, worship, everything, except for the teaching. The teaching is going to be a feed that comes from, we'll say, this this location to that state or that city. And so everything is as, a, as an average church would be on a Sunday, children's care, ushers, and things of that nature. But the difference would be that when the actual teaching took place, it would be not a pastor on a, a platform behind a podium teaching through the Bible, but it will be just a screen, like you're watching a TV program, and so you watch the screen, you receive the teaching, and then you go home. And so there are a number of churches that are not 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 millions, to my knowledge, but a number that are doing that where the pastor has a, a well-known reputation people appreciate his teaching ministry and so he may broadcast his message his church service uh, to another location so they have all the trappings and then the teaching is on the screen how, how do I feel about that well I can tell you I don't agree with it on a personal level I do see see reasons why I I, I know that for example because we broadcast our messages on online and over the air and all, that there are some who were from our church who have now moved to other states who are still calling themselves members of this fellowship because where they're at, there's not a church that they have yet, you know, gotten involved in. So they still watch us online uh, as they adjust to the new life they have in the new location. I understand that. There are others who are perhaps in behind bars or in other countries because we have international mm -hmm. viewers watching our services. So I, I get the, the value of, of using the technology and I, I think it's a good thing to do. And we're able to reach into many homes in many countries, including Saudi Arabia and other countries uh, through the use of technology. But is that to replace uh, being involved in and having membership in, serving in, and uh, getting acquainted with not only the fellow servants and elders and leaders, but also to be aware of the senior pastor who's there on campus, who actually has a presence that is experienced by the people who call that a home church. And so uh, I don't agree with some of that. I, I personally don't think that, that that's the way to go. I think that as a as a pastor with a vision for other cities or other places that uh, I should train up and send out people who have been trained in the ministry arts of uh, pastoring and shepherding. Because who's giving these people um, who are attending this distant location church, who's giving them communion? 
you know, is the pastor there serving, praying over, ministering? Who, who's baptizing them? Is is the pastor there, um, you know, you know, pre, you know, giving messages and and baptizing new converts? You know, and who's performing funerals there? The person on the screen. Who's performing uh, weddings there? Uh, how involved can this pastor who's in another state, different location, how can he truly be involved in the practical realities of church life? And so on the one hand, I see the value of it in that if there is no other fellowship that you can go to, you're out in Samaria or perhaps incarcerated or have limited abilities to, to move and to go to places, I see the legitimacy of that the way I see the legit legitimacy of um, of radio ministry and, and other forms of uh, getting the word out. But when it comes to something called a satellite church, uh, I personally do not regard those. I don't hold them, hold them in high esteem. And I know it's Calvary Chapel because I was, I was uh, on what was called the CCOF, the Calvary Chapel Outreach Fellowship Board, for a number of number of years with Pastor Chuck prior to him going home, we handled these kinds of questions. And the question is, is do we, do we recognize a satellite church as a Calvary Chapel ministry, put it on the directory because it's a Calvary Chapel ministry? And uh, I didn't believe we should, and neither did Pastor Chuck. Pastor Chuck said, no, I don't see that as an actual church in the, in the traditional sense to, uh, to recognize it as a Calvary Chapel Outreach Fellowship. No, he said, I, I won't do that because I don't recognize uh, the legitimacy of that. Mm. And I'm the same way. You know, in today's message that you gave to, that you gave to the other pastors was talking about equipping them from the work of service, mending their nets, right? Mm -hmm. And there's, there, there, there's a personal aspect when, when a senior pastor is shepherding the church. <clears throat> there's that personal need that has to be there mm -hmm. how can there really be an effect of mending the nets or preparing for the work of ministry for, via satellite it just for i me, just don't believe john i just don't believe that the person who is doing that kind of ministry is actually what you would call a a shepherd in the truest sense of the word i i don't want to call their shepherding heart into question so much as to say that one of the things that uh that a shepherd does is is like I was sharing today is to experience life with the sheep and there's just no way that's happening on a screen any more than if somebody's watching a television program any more than that person who's being broadcast is having relationship with that person watching a relationship as much goes much deeper as you know than just watching somebody talk relationship as as aspects of it that you actually have real life experiences you spend time with them you get to know them or at least they're available should you need to and so um i i think that that's a, a negative plus um some of these guys are putting their quote unquote church uh services in the backyard of other guys that have been plowing that field and working that field and and they're losing members of their fellowship because of the excitement and enthusiasm and and all that goes along with this person who's satellite broadcasting, I think it does a disservice to the body of Christ. But there is such a carnality within the body of Christ today, an entertainment orientation, that I'm not surprised when somebody who thinks that they're very important starts broadcasting their material so others can benefit from the importance of them and their ministry. Uh, honestly, I, I'll say that with uh, in an honest way is harsh as it sounds it's true uh, I, I shared at a pastor's conference a few years ago in another state and stated there you know instead of your ministry being so important why don't you train somebody else up so they can take the gifts God gave to them and exercise them and minister uh, you just aren't that important your message isn't that unique and that necessary turns out that a pastor who was at this particular conference had the largest satellite ministry in his state right <laughs> And he, um, he didn't appreciate what was said, but it's true. It was true then, it's true now. Train up pastors and set them free to do the work of ministry. You are not that important. Amen. Well, Pastor, thank you so much for sharing that. And, 
and uh, because it, it seems like it's shifting towards an entertainment. That's all it is for me. And, uh, right. and so may we always, uh, that's why we're so appreciative that we have a shepherd such as you at our church who it's it's personal, it's relational. And I'll so. send you a picture. <laughs> Only if it's signed. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> well, thank you, Pastor David, for sharing with this. And, and church family, we do want to invite you to come to church on Sunday at 8.30 and 10.45 as Pastor David's taken us through the book of Mark. And uh, I'm excited for you guys to come and invite a friend. It'll be a great time. And then after our second service, we're having our uh, our Israel meeting, informational meeting with mm-hmm. Bill for Liano from Inspired Travel will be out here after second service to answer any questions. No registration needed. Just come on out and join us. And, uh, and we look forward to having you there. So, Pastor, thank you again for your time. Okay. Thank you guys for tuning in. God bless you.